Goodbye. Do you care for more ice tea? No. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Would you would you mind if I asked you um a question about your husband? No. Go ahead. Well, I was just wondering, um, was he much older than you? Not really. Why? Hmm. Well, just because you mentioned he had a heart attack, and that usually happens with older people. Oh, he was just 39. Oh, my God, that's, that's so young. Yeah, they think it was a, a genetic weakness, and he compounded it in a way. Really, how? Well, he worried too much about everything. <laughs> he worked too much, and his eating habits were horrendous. We really didn't have any warning. Oh, well, I, I guess he didn't have um, any children? Well, we planned to. Tons of them. But we were married for such a short time. Oh, yeah. You said, what, a year or so? Oh, yeah, a little over a year. In fact, we had just started to try. And then every night after he died, I prayed that I was pregnant. Just so a little piece of him would live on. Oh, well, you know, there's still plenty of time. I mean, you're very young and... Yeah. Oh, I... I'm sorry. You know, I, I hate platitudes. They're so lame. Well, that's all right. There never has anything right to say in a situation like this. Yeah, I know. I, I learned that uh, with Scott when Dominic died. Well, grief is a very private, personal thing. But he knows that you're there for him, and he's very lucky to have you. Do you really think so? Oh, sure. I can see it. I wish I would have had that kind of support. You mean you didn't have any family or, or friends of your own? Well, no family to speak of. And I had a lot of acquaintances, but no real friends. It seems that people tend to disappear in a situation like this. You know, they never really know what to say or how to help. It's understandable. There's nothing anyone can do, really. Yeah. Well, you know, I also think it must be hard that you don't get a chance to visit Charles' grave very often. You know, um, it really helps Scott to visit Dominique's grave. Well, Charles was cremated. In New York? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, gosh, I'm asking all these questions. It must be very painful. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. You know, sometimes it helps to talk about things like this. Yeah, you know, um, when when Dominique died, it, 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 well, it's really helped me to talk about things like this. You see, we really do understand each other. I knew it would be good for us to have lunch together. Oh, I think it was very good for us to have lunch together. Mm. Sorry, it took forever with Lucy. She grilled me when I grilled her chicken. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Did you tell her everything she wanted to know? Oh, everything except name, rank, and serial number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Cole needs a few lessons on subtlety. Oh, it must have been so hard for you when your husband died. How old was he? <laughs> Where did it happen? When? Uh, anyway, she thinks that I think that she's my new best friend. So, did you go on that tour with Ned? Told Ned I'm thinking of opening an office in Port Charles. Are you? It's an interesting place. There's lots of potential business. And I can't keep an eye on you in New York. You're not happy. But let's just say I'm trying to digest your plans to marry Scott. Well, if you can think of a sure, quicker way for me to get my hands on half of Dominique's estate, which is mine anyway, please tell me. Well, I... Why can't you please just think of this as business? A corporate maneuver? No. Better yet, a gig. I'm trying. You know what your problem is, mister? Mm -hmm. You don't like to play by anybody else's rules. No, my problem is I don't want you married to him. It's a short thing. A very small, miserable marriage. <laughs> when the payoff is a ton of money that is really mine in the first place. And then I can finally, firmly close the door on many years of grief and resentment. And then I will have nothing on my mind except to make love to you for the rest of my life. Not like the last part. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome, Julia and Scott. How does it feel to be Madam Executive? What are you doing here? Seizing the moment. Oh, Julia. No one's around. How do you expect me to concentrate on my work? Well, concentrate on Scott's millions. Should I be jealous of the flowers? <laughs> no. Hmm. <laughs> you should really have Julia move you into your own office. Well, it's not ready yet. I assume this is for personal reasons you're concerned about my office. Well, among other things. Like what other things? The deception's director of public relations should be surrounded by luxury. No, you just like spoiling me. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I should have a place that Scott can just drop in and hang out privately. Away from the watchful eye of you-know-who. Well, romancing Scott may be a little tricky with Lucy breathing down your neck. Well, I can handle Lucy for now. But you're going to be double trouble when that baby's born. I mean, Scott might all of a sudden decide that she's the perfect mother, and then all bets are off. Somehow, I don't see Lucy as the motherly type. Oh, don't underestimate Lucy. She can be whatever she thinks Scott wants her to be. Oh! Um, I'm sorry. I do hope I'm not interrupting anything. <clears throat> You're not interrupting anything. I've been trying to track down Ned. I'm meeting with him this morning, but I have no idea where. So, I ended up here. Oh, well, have you tried Julia Sweet? No, but I should. Thanks. Good luck. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hmm. So, um, how's everything going? Uh, is everything going okay? Finding everything all right? Uh, yeah, I've been digging up as much information as I can find on past publicity campaigns of deception. I thought that would be a good place to start. Well, well, I'm really impressed. You are getting off to a very early start. Well, I couldn't stay away. First day jitters, I guess. Huh. Well, you know, um, I was on my way to the hospital, and I thought I'd stop by and see if you had any questions you need answered. Lucy, are you feeling all right? Oh, why? Because I'm... Uh, being so nice to you? Oh, no, you mentioned going to hospital. That's not a problem with the baby. Oh, no, no, not at all. I, I just have my regular checkup with my obstetrician. Oh, good. Well, I, I do appreciate you coming all the way out of your way like this. <laughs> it's really no problem. You know, I think maybe you were serious about wanting us to work together. Well, um, I do realize I haven't been very nice to you in the past. Uh, but I wanted you to know I empathize with what you've been going through. I know it must be very hard <clears throat> losing your husband like that and then having those horrible men hounding you. Yes, it was a bad year. But hopefully the worst is behind me now. Oh, I'm sure. Of course it is. So what, your, your husband died uh, a year ago? Actually, six months before I came to Port Charles. Oh, I mean, it like last November. Yeah. I went through the whole winter before I got the nerves right, Dominique. I sure wish I would have written to her earlier. I would have liked to see him before she died. Mm. Yeah. Well, I I'm just think it's amazing how you and Scott found each other like that. You know, fate, I guess. And I'm sure Dominique would be very, very pleased that you're here at deception. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Catherine. Um, I'm glad I could catch up with you. You're hard to catch up with. Why, I've been in my office all morning. Well, I just wanted to get to you before you had a chance to order your lunch. Did Rhonda tell you I was coming here? Uh-huh. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's perfectly fine. I just wanted a chance to take you out to lunch. My treat. Unless you have other plans. Well, you know, today is the chip beef on toast special. <laughs> Gonna take that back to the office. Well, if another day would be better for you, I am. Nope. No, no, no. I turned down lunch with a pretty girl and a fun girl. Well, great. Where would you like to go? We could go here or we could go to the grill or wherever you want. Let me just give a little thought. It'll come to me. How was your first day at work? It couldn't have been better. Great. You know, I've been remembering what my life was like when I came here. I mean, I really had nothing. And thanks to you, everything has changed. Well, other people were involved here. Well, it was mostly you. And now I'm safe. I'm living in this wonderful little town. I have an exciting new job and wonderful new friends. And would you believe that Lucy is even being nice to me? <laughs> so 
Uncle Lucy's finally wised up. You know that she actually told me that she thought that Dominique would be happy that I'm a part of Deception? Lucy was right. You know what? I know where I want to have lunch. Come with me. Okay. Leave the way.